In a faraway land, there lived a warrior named Yang. He had trained with the Sad Flute Clan since childhood, perfecting his swordsmanship to become the greatest warrior in history. His skills reached their peak when he defeated the leader of the enemy clan and all of the enemy warriors. After the fight, he saw the last member of the enemy clan. She was just a baby. Caught off guard by the baby's cuteness, he couldn't bring himself to kill her, despite knowing that victory in battle require the complete eradication of the enemy, including children. This act of mercy turned Yang into an enemy of his own clan. The Sad Flute Clan, bound by their strict code of warfare, could not tolerate leaving any survivors, and Yang's compassion for the baby girl was seen as a betrayal. Fearing for his life and no longer able to trust even his own household staff, Yang made a bold decision. He burned down his house and fled, taking a ship to the United States. He hoped to find sanctuary with his old friend and fellow warrior, Smiley, who had retired there. When Yang arrived in a small town named Lode, he discovered that Smiley had passed away three years earlier. With nowhere else to turn, Yang was left stranded with the baby. Meanwhile, back in his homeland, the leader of the Sad Flute clan, Sad as Flute, found the ruins of Yang's house and a note from the shipping company detailing Yang's departure. Determined to track Yang down, Sad as Flute gathered a group of warriors from the clan and set sail for America, intent on killing Yang. In load, the townspeople were suspicious of Yang, particularly a local drunk named Ron, who resented his presence. However, a circus performer called Eight Ball was friendly and offered Yang a place to stay in Smiley's old laundry shop. Eight Ball suggested Yang could take over the business if he wanted to stay in town. Later that evening, a woman named Lin attacked Yang from behind, mistaking him for an enemy warrior. Yang allowed her to strike him without retaliating, revealing nothing of his true identity. Lin, realizing her mistake, apologized and explained that she had been a friend of Smiley. She had feared Yang was an enemy due to his martial bearing. Upon learning that Yang was also a friend of Smiley, she offered to teach him how to run the laundry shop, as she had helped Smiley in the past. In exchange, Smiley had taught her basic swordsmanship. Yang, having never named the baby, accepted Lin's suggestion to call her April. The following morning, Yang opened the shop for business after cleaning it thoroughly. When a group of teenagers tried to bully him, Eight Ball intervened, scaring them off and inviting Yang and April to lunch at the circus. The circus troupe was in the middle of building a ferris wheel in hopes of attracting more tourists to their small town. Yang noticed that Lin was practicing knife throwing but wasn't very good at it, which frustrated her. Despite Ron's continued complaints, Yang found the circus troupe friendly and enjoyable company. One evening, as Yang walked near Lin's home, he heard music for the first time in his life. Lin invited him inside, and together they listened to opera music. This simple pleasure was the first of many that Yang discovered in his new life. The more time he spent in the town, the more he learned to appreciate life's simple joys. Cleaning the laundry, making friends, gardening, and even losing games in good-natured competition. He found peace in these activities, and gardening became his favorite, as it allowed him to nurture life rather than destroy it. As Yang became more comfortable with his new life, he learned about Lin's tragic past. Years ago, the town had been attacked by a corrupt colonel who attempted to kidnap Lin for his own amusement. In a desperate act of self-defense, Lin had thrown a pan of boiling grease at him, disfiguring him. The colonel shot her as she fled, and when her family tried to recover her body, he shot them too. Miraculously, Lin survived, but her family did not. Understanding the source of Lin's inner troubles, Yang decided to help her improve her knife-throwing skills. He took Lin to the circus and taught her how to focus, blindfolding her so she could concentrate on her target. Remarkably, Lin managed to land all her knives without injuring him. Grateful for his help, Lin revealed that she had always known who he was, having heard stories about him from Smiley. She also inquired about the Sad Flute clan's name, and Yang explained that the Sad Flute referred to the mournful sound a throat makes when cut by a sword. As the two grew closer, Lin asked Yang about his past. He told her about his father, who had been killed by a swordsman testing his blade. Yang had been angry at his father for being weak, and this anger had driven him to join the Sad Flute clan and become a powerful warrior. Feeling a deep sadness for Yang, Lin gave him a necklace that had belonged to her mother, a gesture that reminded Yang of the only other gift he had ever received, a small dog from Saddest Flute when he was a child. Later on, Yang showed Lin his sealed sword, which he had vowed never to use again, so that no one would hear the weeping of the souls he had taken. However, he still carried twin short swords, and he offered to continue Lin's training where Smiley had left off. Meanwhile, Saddest Flute and his warriors had taken over a ship, killing the crew as they made their way to America, confident that they would find Yang once he drew his sword again. As time passed, Yang settled into his new life. He worked in the laundry shop, tended to his garden, trained Lin, 
and cared for baby April, who was now learning to walk. When Christmas arrived, the circus troupe threw a big party. Although Yang refused to dance, Lin invited him for a spin, and they returned to training. Lin managed to get close enough to put her sword to Yang's neck and, seizing the moment, kissed him. Yang, however, was too confused to respond. But their lives were soon disrupted by the arrival of the colonel, now wearing a mask to hide the burns Lin had inflicted. He and his men trampled Yang's garden, disrupted the Christmas party, and terrorized the circus troupe. The colonel's men used one of the clowns for target practice, and when Ron tried to intervene, the colonel whipped him and had him dragged through the streets. The colonel then shot the clown in the foot and demanded a girl for the night. Knowing Lin would seek revenge, the townspeople locked her in a cellar and took her swords, but she had a hidden knife and escaped with it. As the colonel's men gathered the local women, Yong debated whether it was time to break the seal on his sword. The colonel chose a woman who turned out to be married, and when her husband tried to protect her, the colonel shot them both. That was when Lin, disguised as a dancer, approached the colonel, ready to take her revenge. Upon hearing of her escape, Yang decided it was time to unleash his sword and face his enemies once again. Saddest Flute hears the distant wail of Yang's sword, the distinct sound of the seal breaking, a sign that Yang has drawn his blade once again. This guides Saddest Flute and his clansmen directly toward Yang's location. Meanwhile, inside the colonel's room, Lin sneaks up on the colonel with her knife, hoping to take him by surprise. However, the colonel had been expecting her all along. He points a gun at her, and with a shot fired into the ceiling, he summons his men. The colonel orders them to drag Lin onto the bed, finally ready to claim what he's always wanted from her. But before anything can happen, Yong bursts through the window, swiftly dispatching the colonel's men. Yong is ready to kill the colonel, but Lin intervenes, claiming that the colonel belongs to her. Desperate, the colonel grabs Lin and uses her as a shield as they tumble out of the window together. He escapes into the night to rejoin his men, but Lin, focused and determined, throws her knife, seemingly striking him down. However, when the townspeople remove the colonel's mask, they discover it's a decoy. The colonel had escaped again, leaving the body of another man in his place. Yang, realizing the danger saddest flute poses to the town, decides it's time to leave with April. He gathers his belongings, but Eight Ball convinces him to stay and fight. The colonel, they reason, will return with even more men for revenge, and Yang's skills will be needed to defend the town. The townspeople are unsure if Yang alone is enough to fend off the coming assault, but Eight Ball reassures them by revealing their secret weapon, Ron. The local drunk used to be a feared outlaw before retiring. Eight Ball had buried Ron's weapons in the cemetery when he gave up his violent past, but now it's time to dig them up. Ron tests his old guns and confirms his aim is as sharp as ever. Meanwhile, Lin speaks with Yang, guessing that he will leave once the battle is over. She asks him to consider taking her and April with him when he leaves. As the town prepares for the coming fight, Ron digs up his old cowboy clothes and gives them to Yang for cleaning. The townsfolk set traps using explosives, preparing for the colonel's return. Yang and Ron bond over their shared violent pasts, recognizing the bloodlust in one another. Ron admits that he quit his life of crime after the rangers killed his wife. Before she died, Ron's wife had begged him to never pick up a gun again, and he had honored that promise until now. However, Eight Ball had reassured him that his wife would have understood the need to fight this time. Yang, in turn, gives Lin her swords back, reminding her of the best places to strike a man for a quick death. Lin shivers at his calm, deadly instructions. The next day, as the townsfolk hide April in a cellar, Yang positions himself at the entrance to the town while Ron climbs to the top of the Ferris wheel, ready for the fight. The colonel and his men arrive, trampling Yang's carefully tended garden once more. As they ride through the town, they trigger the dynamite traps, killing many of the colonel's men in an explosion that creates a cloud of dust, allowing Yang to move unseen, taking down more of the enemy with his sword. The colonel, realizing the trap, orders his men to head for the circus. There, the carnival machines come to life, and more explosions are triggered. Ron opens fire from the ferris wheel, shooting down the colonel's men as they attempt to climb up and reach him. As Ron runs out of bullets, he makes a daring escape by sliding down a cable, and soon after, the ferris wheel explodes, taking out more of the colonel's men. Believing they've won, the circus troop emerges from hiding, but the colonel and a few of his men are still alive. The survivors ambush the performers, killing many. Just as the colonel's men are about to overwhelm the remaining townsfolk, Saddest Flute and his warriors arrive, turning the fight into an all-out battle between swordsmen and gunmen. Yang tells Lin to run with April while he joins the fight, killing enemies on both sides. As the battle intensifies, Yang realizes that the colonel is focused on Lin and April. He rushes to protect them, 
but when they find themselves surrounded, Lin hands April over to Eight Ball, asking him to take her to safety. After defeating the enemies around them, Yang and Lin search for Eight Ball, only to find that the colonel has fatally wounded him and taken April. The colonel hides in a nearby hotel with April, leaving his men outside to guard the door. Several saddest flutes warriors try to reach the baby but are killed in the process. Yang soon arrives, effortlessly cutting down the bodyguards. He storms into the room and swiftly disarms the colonel, rescuing April. However, Yang does not kill the colonel, leaving that final task to Lin. She challenges the colonel to a sword fight, and though he initially has the upper hand, Lin's training with Yang pays off. She turns the tide and kills the colonel, finally avenging her past. With the colonel dead, Yang prepares for one final confrontation with his old master, Saddest Flute. Saddest Flute insists that April must die, claiming that she will always be an enemy of their clan. He doubts Yang has the strength to kill him, remembering how Yang had struggled to kill a dog during his training and how he had spared the baby all those years ago. However, Yang is determined to protect those he loves, and without hesitation, he kills Saddest Flute. As his master dies, he expresses pride in Yang's growth. With the battle over, Yang knows it is time to leave. Remembering Ron's advice not to stay with those he cares about, he decides to leave April with the circus troupe, ensuring she will grow up far from danger. He says goodbye to Lin, choosing not to take her with him, knowing that his life will always be filled with violence. Months later, Yang has settled in a remote, frozen land, making a living by selling fish. However, peace is elusive. An assassin tracks him down, and after killing the man, Yang realizes that he will never escape his past. Retrieving his sword and the necklace Lin had given him, Yang burns down his home once more and departs, knowing that more battles lie ahead before he can truly find peace.